All right, so uh, Chief Troy Finner, he was doing his round, uh, his uh, his rounds right here, visiting with all of the uh, volunteers, and he had to exit uh, the premises. But you know, it, it it was a nice visit. The people got a chance to see him at this uh, distribution site where we are getting ready to go back to school. Now we have Officer Eric Carr. He is uh, the liaison to the African American community here in the Houston Police Department. He takes the information. He t he takes the questions from the public and takes them to the chief if they if they need something specifically to be answered immediately he does this um he's the middleman he's the middle person when there's anything happening in the city can you explain us a little bit about about what you do eric here in the houston police department yes as the african-american community liaison uh i'm basically a resource for the community um i'm their voice I'm a facilitator of getting information from the grassroots straight to the department on how RECA would be uh, safer and stronger together, especially in the city of Houston. And, you know, talking about grassroots, these organizations here that are distributing these goods, these uh, school supplies, these, uh, these, these shoes and all these things to the community, the refugee community, um, it, it's a great example of what's going on throughout the whole week here in the city of Houston and, and the events and the programs that you support with the different organizations that you work with. Yes, the Houston Police Department has been leading from the front for decades. We understand uh, the value of partnering with our community, partnering with other organizations to help our community, help our citizens. That's right. Now, uh, to, and of course, uh, any any um, any group you you you're able to help if they go to you, if they have any questions about anything, you're basically the liaison to. And to, to the chief's ear, right? Yes, I'm the uh, community liaison, particularly for the African-American community. Mm -hmm. And if anyone wants to uh, reach out to the Houston Police Department Community Affairs, uh, feel free to give us a call. If you have any programs in your area, if you have any back-to-school programs or anything that could help our city be mm -hmm. safer and stronger, feel free to reach out to us. That's right. Now, let's, uh, let's uh, speak about some of the news that is happening around the city of uh, Officer Carr. Now, this is not because we're CNN or Fox or anything like that. We're not a news uh, reporting agency, but we do like to get some uh, crime prevention tips out Absolutely. of these uh, news bits. Now, uh, domestic violence is something that is affecting a lot of communities now, and it's always been there. But this one, this one is uh, it's it's real tough. An innocent bystander shot outside the Northwest Harris County Kroger store. The gunfire from a nearby domestic dispute wounded an innocent driver during the weekend outside the Northwest Harris County grocery store. This incident happened around the midnight hours and uh, it was outside a Kroger store on the 9100 block of West Sam Houston Tollway and West Road. The victim was inside a vehicle in the parking lot when someone fired a gun during a fight nearby. Authorities say uh, that the bullet pierced the man's vehicle and critically injured him. Um, he was taken to Bentop Hospital where he was in critical condition but stable. Investigators are looking for and looking into what led to the shooting. Of course, domestic violence, we see there's a problem, and we see that it's uh, it's in the increase. We are working with multi, uh, multiple organizations to help mitigate this. We have a fam family violence unit. We have the DART unit um, mm -hmm. car, so we are pretty much on top of it, right? Yes, yes. Uh, here with the Houston Police Department, we're doing all we can to address these issues that's impacting our community. As we know, with the, with the impact of the pandemic of COVID-19, uh, domestic violence has been on the rise for a number of reasons. But here with the Houston Police Department, we take those incidents very serious. We have a whole um, department division that's committed to addressing those type of investigations. And we also want to encourage our uh, citizens to, if you see something, say something. As many resources we have for our victims of domestic violence, but we really want to encourage everyone that if you're in a domestic violence situation, please uh, seek help. Please report it. Uh, we don't take these incidents lightly, and we want everyone to be safe. That's right. Thank you. And, of course, advocates for the domestic violence survivors say that it's a trend that's going up right now. Domestic abuse cases are directly related to COVID-19. Now, this is according to a research uh, done, a research study. Um, and it says that it has, uh, it's got some, some increasing that is going to continue to go on right now with the COVID situation. Now, Executive Director of the Harris County Domestic uh, Violence Coordinator Council, uh, Mr. Brashear, was alarmed and, com commented, and commented that this was a national trend and not exclusive to the city of Houston. 
Uh, very important to note that the Harris County Domestic Violence Coordinating Council um, commissioned a study to look into the link between pandemic and dramatic rise in domestic violence cases. In the study, participants, 52% uh, reported violence has increased since COVID-19 started. In fact, 30% of the, uh, of the study participants said that they have used a domestic abuse resource, either a hotline or a shelter during the pandemic. In addition, one of the four said, one in four said that they have been threatened by their partner with a gun. Very sad situation. The increase uh, of, use of, of using drugs and alcohol to cope with the stresses may be something that is contributing to the rise of these cases. Some of the stresses are related to losing a job, um, how do I pay my rent? How do I pay for my food? More than 80% of participants listed their health was excellent and or good before the pandemic. Now, 62% say that they have good health. Around 60% reported that they either lost their job or uh, their work hours were cut, which impacted their financial status. Uh, the study also finds and correlates um, with the uh, counselors at the Houston w uh, Area's Women's Center, the domestic abuse hotline. They are seeing domestic violence uh, has been an issue, but they're seeing rates of increase in homicides and, of course, of escalating violence. That's what the hotline counselors are hearing from their survivors, from the people that are reaching out the organization. That's not very shocking at this point, Mr. Eric Carr. No, it's not. And just to give you guys an additional resource, if you know someone or if you have any questions uh, dealing with domestic violence, if you're in a situation, you can reach out to our Family Violence Unit with the Houston Police Department at 713-308-1100. That's right, 713-308-1100, 713-308-1100, an excellent resource, Officer Carr. Yes, sir. Now, uh, a woman was shot and injured in a neighborhood dispute in Northeast Houston. Um, the Houston Police Department said that multiple shots were fired around 11.45 p.m. on Friday at the 8600 block of Tilgum Street. A woman was hospitalized with multiple gunshot wounds after the neighborhood, neighborhood dispute turned violent on Friday night in the north uh, northeast Houston area, according to the investigators. It happened around 11.45 at the 8600 block of Tilgum. Uh, the Houston Police uh, said that a confrontation broke out between two groups, and at some point, the shots were fired. The woman was uh, shot in the leg and hip. She's expected to survive after undergoing surgery, according to the investigators. Uh, Lieutenant Larry Crossum said uh, that it's still unclear how many gunmen were involved in this event. But, of course, several shots were fired. Investigators are currently looking into the surveillance footage, and the officers, well, they're, they're following their, their uh, solid leads at this point. It's con it continues to develop, so this is the information that we have on this incident. Uh, we need to just, people need to, there's a word, people, people need to chill. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, people just... You know, with everything that's going on with the pandemic, uh, the rise of mental health yes. is on the rise as well, uh, dealing with stress, anxiety, and a lot of people are not just dealing with it in a healthy way, uh, more uh, road rage and things of that nature. So people just need to be more careful, better aware of their surroundings, right. and just uh, taking consideration that, you know, a lot of people may not be as stable, so try to de-escalate instead of escalating situations when you can. It, it, it's true. That's very true. If it's a neighbor, especially, you have them next to you. You know, there's there's ways you can resolve things. If you see the, th the situation getting a little too heated, maybe you just need to Everybody just needs to cool down and go back home. Absolutely. And, and if you need uh, if you need uh, the help of a, of a police officer, you can always call. You can always call even the constable's office. We're going to have Jerry Garcia in just a few minutes here with us, uh, just sharing a few words from the constable's office. Um, there's there's help out there. We you know we uh, as officers we tend to be counselors sometimes. Sometimes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of help out there, and we want to encourage people to take advantage of the resources that's out there. Mm -hmm. Also, if you have a dispute with a neighbor, you can also take advantage of uh, the Harris County. Dispute Resolution uh, Center is a free service for many uh, Houstonians in the in Harris County. So that's an additional uh, resource uh, resource that our community and neighbors could take advantage of if you find yourself in a dispute. 
That's right. Um, there's We have a lot of resources for the entire community. Now, today, we are living this uh, real nice, this beautiful event with the with this amazing organization that provides help to refugees. And uh, we are uh, basically witnessing what's about to commence. Uh, we're we're going to be giving a whole lot of uh, resources, uh, school supplies, shoes. And we have other events that are happening. For example, uh, Eric? Yes, on September 14th, we have the Baker Ripley is partnering with the Houston, other Houston organizations to hand out school supplies during this back to school health fair. They're also providing health screening information sessions and COVID-19 vaccinations for children and adults. So if you didn't get opportunity to get your COVID uh, vaccine vaccination for uh, children or adults, this is the opportunity. The fair will run from 8 a.m. to noon. The location will be at the uh, Break Baker Ripley uh, Golfton Sharpstown campus. Physical address is 6500 uh, Rookin Street, Houston. Also, Walmart will be having a back to school uh, rally as well. Yes. yes, Walmart. Can you tell us a little bit about some of those events? Yes, families are invited to Walmart's Here We Go Back to School rallies. Uh, Selected, only selected stores will be participating and providing bags filled with free, I want to underline, free school supplies. Students can also uh, pr uh, practice their first day of school photos and their photo wall. Each of the following events would happen from 2 o'clock p.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. sharp. On August 19th, we have it at um, 18,700 Highway 105 West, that's in Conroe. We also have it at 1407 North Loop, 336 West in Conroe as well. Also uh, on uh, August, the um, 336 West Conroe, that's going to be August 13th. Mm -hmm. And uh, 105 West Conroe is going to be August 12th. Yeah. On August 14th at 15. 955 FM 529 Road mm -hmm. and also on August 14 at 3450 FM 1960 Road West and last on August 15 at 9024 Spencer Highway in LaPorte, Texas uh, at that Walmart location. So here we go. Those are nice uh, back-to-school rallies. They're giving some goodies away. So uh, if you want to revisit that list, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, mention it later on. But uh, you can also revisit the program here in our social media with the Houston Police Department. Now, uh, we have uh, Commander Reed this, this, uh, on this day, on this special edition, special recorded program from uh, this amazing event that um, is being hosted so we can help the refugee communities. Um, and, of course, this is in your, in your area, in, in your district. Yes. So I'm the commander over the Midwest Patrol Division. Um, just around the corner is our station off of Regency Square. And I just wanted to show up today and just so, so support for such a wonderful group. Not only is this amazing annual uh, backpack and, and back-to-school drive that you all have, but just the other services that you provide year-round for your transitional homes, uh, for your food, uh, food bank that provides uh, food, and then education to our community. So just wanted to show our, my support for the community out here. Uh, and just see what a wonderful event and, and all the volunteers today. I had a, a few moments to speak with a few of them and uh, some of the young men and women are in school and just uh, spoke with them about um, the service they're providing here today and dedicating their time and how important it is to show service and how um, it just is just rewarding. And I've dedicated my life to service to the community and service to the city of Houston. And I think it's wonderful that they're volunteering today in, in service and just didn't want to um, stop without thanking them for importance. And, and you know, right as they as they start, uh, I see I saw you meeting some of the volunteers. Mm -hmm. They never get to meet the, 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 the chief or they never get to meet the commander. They never get to meet the, the power, the, the, the shakers of the community because they're always working. They're always there. But it's good that, that you guys arrived a lot earlier so you guys can actually meet the ones that are working that that actually nobody even credits ever for for any of this right absolutely now this is the I -N I -C -N -A, uh, re a relief um, a back to school program for the Islamic Circle of North America it's a leading grassroots of Muslim organizations uh, and it's very proud to 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 introduce this event now we're here we're recording this event because there's multiple um, 
school supply distributions that are going to be going around the city. Now, we have another one programmed on Saturday. Can you tell me a little bit about that one? Absolutely. We have one at our Midwest Patrol Station, so we'd like to invite all of you next Saturday. It'll be from 10 to 1. Uh, there'll be uh, some, some beverages provided, um, some uh, different units that are specialty units within HPD that will be coming to join. And we just invite the community to come out, and it'll be another backpack event, so there'll be some free supplies on hand that will be given out to the children. Uh, some masks as well for those who would like some. And just wanted to show support for our community, for those that may not uh, be able to afford some of these items that we want to support the education uh, and just help them make being as successful as they can be at all ages. Is there a number that we can contact, we can call for more information? Oh, we'll certainly have um, see, uh, yep. my, of my card here that you okay. all can have. Uh, Perfect. But it's... There's all, it's at 7277 Regency Square, which okay. is just right around the corner from here, from Star, uh, Plaza Americas. But you can join us next week, and it's from 10 to 1 for that event. Uh, so certainly if you wanted to donate anything or, or if you need, know a family that is in need of supplies, uh, please show up. We'd love That's to right. have you join us. 7277 Regency Square. 7277 Regency Square. Uh, we start around 10 o'clock in the around morning? Around 10 o'clock. Okay, 10 o'clock in the morning. So be there. I would be there just a little bit earlier just to make sure <laughs> that I get myself in that line. And uh, and of course, there's going to be some pr the, the protocols of, of COVID and, and all that's going to be happening. So uh, we hope that it's going to be an awesome event. We know it's going to be an awesome event, actually. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, there's gonna, it's going to be Midwest. The address, again, it's 7277 Re Regency Square. Check it out. Any any um, any uh, other project that you guys are working there in uh, in uh, in Midwest? Uh, just just overall, um, we have lots of, of things that we do with our different response team, our community uh, policing officers that are working uh, throughout the community. They work with the senior centers. They work with um, just various community groups and apartment complexes. Help educate managers. Help edu educate owners uh, on how to improve their um, properties. We just we have some events coming up in the fall, um, but we'll have to see as uh, the pandemic goes on, on on how we'll be rolling those events out. Last year, we had an event uh, that was uh, at the end of the year, and so we'll just have to see how how things go. But certainly, the more events that we can have, um, as people are out and about more, we would like to do more with the community. And then just overall, if, if anyone wants to stop and visit any time or have any questions, or if you have any schools that you would like some of our community officers to go out to and visit, we definitely can provide those services as well. There it is. Yeah, yeah. And when is your uh, Midwest PIP meetings? Uh, the Midwest PIP meetings are mid-month, mid and they're in the evenings uh, around 7. I don't know the exact date on our, our next one uh, because we took a month off for the summer mm -hmm. to allow some of those officers to be with their families one, uh, during the summer. Um, so we have that event. We also have an apartment and business PIP, which is the same day uh, that we have our regular PIP, and it's usually about 11 in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, and we are doing kind of hybrid events now to where those that aren't able to visit us uh, in person or aren't comfortable quite there yet that they can uh, visit us on uh, social media. Usually you'll do it via Teams mm -hmm. platform with Microsoft, or you can show up in person. So there's two ways that you can join those meetings, and those are usually monthly meetings uh, okay. that we have. There you okay. go. Okay, and just for the audience, um, the Houston Police Department have PIP meetings. These are positive interaction programs that the department actually facilitates to allow our community members who actually live in that particular uh, neighborhood or subdivision or that part of the city to actually come out hear their, uh, so the department could hear your voices, your concerns, or any recommendations or, you, or suge suggestions you may have. Um, so just to give you uh, some dates of upcoming meetings, if you live in South Central part of Houston, the South Central Police Station is located at 2202 St. Emanuel. They, they're having their upcoming positive interaction program community meeting on August 17th at 6 o'clock p.m. They have it every third Tuesday uh, at 6 o'clock p.m. This particular month, they're going to have one of the um, cyber financial crimes investigators or detectives that's going to come out and educate the community on prevention re related to scams and fraud, cyber uh, crimes and financial crimes. Also, if you live on the north side of Houston, uh, that's over there near North Shepherd, uh, 45 area. Mm -hmm. The Houston Police Interaction Program meeting will be 
Thursday, August 26th, located at the Acres Home Multi-Service Center. That's going to be at 6719 West Montgomery Road. And they're going to have a guest speaker from the Houston Police Department Auto Dealers Division. Uh, Detective uh, Sergeant Griffin will be there educating the community on auto theft and things to that nature. So please take advantage of these positive interaction programs that the Houston Police Department uh, have for every uh, community so you could come out and stay informed. And of course, uh, for the one at Midwest, just visit them. Go ahead and visit them uh, this, this Saturday and get more information. You can meet the officers there uh, and you're going to get more information if, if you request it, of course, if you want to know a little bit more about their PIP meetings and, uh, you know, and visit them. Uh, getting involved is uh, very essential. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very. Now, uh, uh, Commander, thank you so much for, for being out here, for representing, yes. for uh, for just giving some joy to the, to the volunteers here of getting to meet, you know, their commander and, and who they can go to if there's a if there's anything that they need a crisis situation or any of the resources that you guys have here in Midwest. Absolutely, it was it was an honor to uh, visit with you all today uh, here in person as well as those who are viewing it later. And we just uh, really truly appreciate all of our community support. Uh, you know, I say that we have the best community in the city of Houston out here in the Midwest area, and I'm very proud uh, to be the commander of that particular division. Yes. yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I appreciate your, your, your participation. You know, this is this is an awesome event. Uh, Mr. Hussein, uh, we're ready. You, if you can prompt him for me uh, so we can get our, our next guest up. Uh, you know, these, these have, just like this event right here, it's it's something to be very proud of, you know, helping our community. Yes. And, yes. And, and, and someone else that, that likes to get very involved here in uh, helping the community. <laughs> Community, uh, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Jerry Garcia. He's uh, from Harris County Precinct Two, and of course, he's always visiting with 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 the community. He's always all, also with the with the with the workers, right? Yes, yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about about uh, what do you think about these events? I think these events are amazing, uh, especially today with COVID and with a lot of people out of work. I think it's very necessary. Um, I wish there was more of them, but but I'm blessed to be to be here with you guys. Thank you for coming out here and uh, and for you know just offering some joy to some of these uh, volunteers and getting to meet some of the you know some of the leaders that are that are in their community. Most of the times, I don't get to meet uh, you know the the leaders because they're working right. And, and this is uh, right before they begin, you're out here and you're greeting them and they're getting to meet you and passing out information on how to contact you. That is an awesome thing. And, and anything you want to you wanna say to the public about uh, community service and how important it is? I, I'm here, number one, because I was one of these kids at one time. We grew up poor in an underserved, underprotected neighborhood and you know we were on food stamps and so I remember this stuff. And, and just to be a part of it, just to see the kids' smiles, uh, and not just the kids, the parents, they're appreciative. Um, it, it's touching, it, it's heartwarming, because like I said, I've, I've been there and I know what it's like, and to, to be on this side of it, um, I'm, I'm just happy you know, that God has blessed me with the ability to, to now maybe get back a little bit. But to the people who are out there, uh, you know, two bucks, two dollars, five dollars, anything. You know, the uh, Happy Meal costs five dollars nowadays. With five dollars, if you donate, it, it can buy a backpack for somebody who who doesn't have a backpack or a pair of shoes. So uh, let's remember, let's let's take care of our people, let's take care of each other, let's do what God would want us to do. And uh, and I, I think a lot of these will will pop up uh, more than what they already are. So so all I'm asking is that y'all give back because we desperately need it, uh, especially now during COVID. Uh, the the kids appreciate it and the parents do too. Yes, and can you uh, share with our audience? Do Precinct 2 have any specific community outreach programs or community meetings that you guys facilitate that you would like the community to be aware of or educated on? So what we do is we started a, uh, an Adopt-A-Senior program back in March of 2020 mm -hmm. when this COVID pandemic first came out. Uh, as everybody knows, our seniors are the ones that are most affected. Mm -hmm. And what, what I was thinking at the time was uh, if you think about it, you, when you go to the grocery store, you don't see very many seniors there. Mm -hmm. So because they were most affected by it and they were, ha they were having to stay home, uh, 
myself and a couple of friends, we, we started this program. We were thinking, okay, let's take food to them. Mm. Uh, so, so that's how our Adopt a Senior program started. And uh, so we, at the time, we were focused primarily on our seniors. Mm -hmm. One thing led to another. It got a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger. And my, I lost count, but the last time we counted was 52,000 meals that we had served. And that was months ago. Uh, but the adopt a senior program led us to other things so uh, pretty much any social issue what I've learned uh, I've been in office since January 1st uh, we have to be more than police officers now in my opinion I think we have to do social work mm -hmm. we stumble upon things and and we can't just say hey uh, I, I'm a police officer here go over here they'll take care of that we don't do that. We take care of it ourselves. So uh, during COVID, when the vaccines came out, mm -hmm. people were falling through cracks. You had to have a computer to register. That was the only way you could get the shot. Well, a lot of our seniors and poor folks, we don't have computers, so they couldn't register. Mm -hmm. So I called the city. I called the county. Nothing really was being done. So we ourselves went out and we registered them. We ourselves picked them up took wow. them to the, get their shot. Great. So pretty much any social issue that we can help out with, that's what we're doing. Okay. And can you provide a contact number, a phone number for the people if they want to get in contact with you or Precinct uh, 2 or any of your staff regarding any of these programs or if they have any specific questions and can you get more closer to the mic so they can hear you? If you have uh, any questions or y'all want any information Y'all can contact our office. It's Precinct 2 Harris County Constable's Office at 713-477-276.